This week on Real Talk with Denver 7 and CPR News, showcasing Colorado's marginalized communities through murals. I never thought that I would have my face on the wall as a server. How the works of art we walk by every day tell untold stories that celebrate Denver's history. Denver has a really rich, diverse culture. We're exploring the power, struggles, and healing behind the murals of the Mile High City, hearing from the artists and subjects who made them. Welcome to Real Talk with Denver 7 and CPR News. I'm Denver 7's Micah Smith. And I'm Colorado Public Radio's Nathan Heffel. Each week in a partnership between Denver 7 and CPR, we have a real talk about issues impacting underrepresented people across Colorado. Today we're talking about the power of public murals and why representation in them matters. Take a walk through any Denver neighborhood and you're likely to see them. Brightly colored works of art often larger than life. There's simply much more than a beautiful backdrop for Instagram pictures. They're also full of rich traditions, intricate histories, and untold stories of underserved communities. These paintings can portray powerful messages and lessons to the neighborhoods where they're created and can be used as an important tool in representation. Throughout this episode, we'll explore a number of murals in Denver and meet communities and people they represent. So we start in Denver's Five Points neighborhood on the corner of 27th and Walnut. There you find a stunning piece of art that's both overwhelming yet intimate. It's called Queen Fatima, created by Jody Herrera and Miles Toland. And it's featured in the CPR Denverite podcast, Off the Walls. Now, we're going to hear from the creators of the podcast later in the show. Jody and Miles spoke to Off the Wall about the mural. Jody is well known for her works highlighting strong women of color and her passion for capturing the photorealism of the subject. So I'm basically visually narrating their story in their painting so you can get the likeliness of them and remember them and remember who they are and also look into their eyes and see it for yourself right and for miles the painter working with jody and the subject he knew it was instantly what he wanted to do and the vivid colors and style he helped create it's almost dreamlike it was an easy project to dive into a lot of my work where i feel the most imaginative is like right after I wake up in bed, but I'm still in that liminal space. So we went to visit the mural and chat with its subject, Fathima Dickerson. She's also the co-owner of Welton Street Cafe, the oldest black owned restaurant in Denver. Fathima, it is such an honor to be standing here with you today. Let's walk it back to the beginning though. Tell us how you met the artist Jody and how you heard about you would be the subject of this mural. So in 2020, Jody reached out to me at Welton Street Cafe. There was a Crush Wall Denver, that's what it was called at the time, Crush Wall Denver's was doing um, some type of celebration of life for people in community. And one of the, I don't know what group of people, I don't remember that part, like put my name in the pile and they were like, no, we've already had people before, like we need to celebrate the people who are doing things right now. She wanted to do women. Her art is really focused on women of color and what they're doing in community. And she also partnered with Miles Tolan. So he's also the artist on this, um, on this mural right here. And they did a good collab together. It was, it was definitely worth it. Fathima, I wanna, Internally, what did it feel like when Jody's like, you're gonna be a subject of this mural? How did it feel? You know, at the time, there was so much going on. It was like the peak of COVID. I'm like, what's happening? I'm trying to graduate from grad school. You know, you're trying to save your business during a global pandemic. And it was just like, yeah, we wanna, we wanna put you on a wall. And I'm just like, okay. You know, not really, I didn't really take it in until I saw the finished product. I think it got done in about five days. I took 70 portraits to prepare for this. And so natural light, um, no, no filters, no filters. It was, it was all me. And I love that they captured really what I look like. I said, don't change me at all. And they honored that. So my black features are very distinct. My skin is dark. 
I said, I want people to see this and say, I know her, Yeah. you know? Taking those selfies, oh my gosh, I couldn't even take <laughs> one selfie. You're taking 70 I selfies? I took 70 selfies. And, I, and so she was like, do you want to do some more? I said, no, <laughs> no more. But also in preparation for this mural, I spent like about two hours with Jody, and I spent about two hours with Miles and I spent time with them separately. And so one of the things that they like, and I think a lot of artists would feel the same way, is that they wanna be able to connect to the subject. And so them spending time with me, Jody was in the restaurant with me as I was working. So she got to see my personality, she got to see my interaction with the customers, and she was like, wow, I can really get a sense of why you were the chosen subject. And so I met miles on a Monday and I, the reason why I know it was a Monday is because we were closed and I was getting ready to walk across the street to U.S. Bank and I'm, I'm coming out of the back of our old restaurant so I'm in the Five Points Plaza and I see this brother walking down the hill and I'm like did he just call my name I don't know him you know what I'm saying <laughs> like I don't know him and so um He's like, hey, I'm the artist on your on your mural. And I was like, oh, okay. So we end up chopping it up just standing on the street. And just standing on the street, he was able to see like cars are honking, people are coming up. Like, so he sees me in community. And I thought that was great for them to see two different elements of me, you know, in, in preparation for this mural. Also, when um, they were drawing it, people were coming up like is that is that Fatima from Welton Street so it was it was a good connection for them both Fatima your mural is big it's beautiful it's raw I can't help but notice the colors we've got yellow and orange and a little bit of green and blue what are the what's the significance behind the colors what does all of this mean to you so they did give me some say in the colors right <laughs> um, so like I said, during the time it was COVID and, you know, everybody kind of experienced a little mental shift mm -hmm. in, in their world, in their lives. Yellow is sunshine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? No matter what, no matter where. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm a more radiant type of spirit. I will say that. Um, my mom calls me smiley. Uh, that's all she does is hi smiley mm -hmm. and so I'm just like what's the color that's that really complements my complexion <laughs> you know <laughs> yellow and so um, also the picture I took has a head wrap on and so they made it into a flower I think that was significant because I I personally feel like I was walking into my blossom season you know, like I was getting ready to graduate from graduate school. Like this flower is becoming, I'm becoming. Bring that out to a community level, to a Welton Street, to a Five Points, to whatever you want to call this place. Because I think there is gentrification coming in now. You have the community changing, but yet mm -hmm. there is still this blossoming that's happening. Mm -hmm. A resurgence in this community saying, yeah, we are important. We are here. Talk about how that fits into this mural and the importance <laughs> of that. So one of the things that I really appreciate about this mural is that, for one, I am in community and I am accessible. You know, a lot of times when you see, what do people tell me? They call me the neighborhood hero. And I'm just like, I never thought I was a hero, but when you think about the gentrification and the continuance of development, um, Everything around you changes. But what hasn't changed is this face. And then also for our children, I got my face on the wall as a waitress. You know, so when you think about young black kids who are just trying to make a way and find a way for themselves, and people may say that's not good enough, you know? Like people look, look beneath you when you're in service work. And I'm just like, no, service work is what we're here to do. We're here to serve. I don't know what else you're trying to do, but uh, this is a career that people are gonna see me 
you know. I, I never thought that I would have my face on the wall as a server. I also love that I'm a living black woman with a mural because when the Crush Walls Denver's um, art came out that year, so we're putting up faces of people from tragedy and trauma. It's just like, how did we really get in that narrative? You know, how did we get there? And so that's the part for me where I'm just like, this has to shift. It really has to shift. Instead of like walking around to every single wall and saying, what happened to them? Where can I find her? You know what I'm saying? Like, we have to start having those conversations because it's just like, if we continue telling that story, that's the reality. And every time we see a black face on the wall, that will be the story. This is not the case, you know? And so that's what makes me so proud to say, yes, I have a mural. Yes, I am a living black woman. And if you wanna know my story, come find me. Mm -hmm. Athema Dickerson, co-owner of Welton Street Cafe and servant of the community. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us for this Real Talk. Thank you. There is much more to come on this Real Talk about representation in murals. Coming up, a look at how other murals in Denver tell untold stories of communities that contributed to the city's history. This is Real Talk with Denver 7 and CPR News. Welcome back to Real Talk with Denver 7 and CPR News. I'm Colorado Public Radio's Nathan Heffel. And I'm Denver 7's Micah Smith. Today we're having a Real Talk about murals and the importance of cultural representation within them. At the corner of 19th and Lawrence Streets sits a mural to honor the city's once forgotten historic Chinatown. It was unveiled last year after a local community group worked for months to make it happen. Denver 7's Danielle Kreuter spoke to the artist about how the mural celebrates history and the future. Two, one. It's been a long time coming, but the mural celebrating Denver's once vibrant Chinatown is finally complete. It was so exciting. <laughs> now people, young and old, are coming together to celebrate a permanent reminder of what used to be. In the 19th century, we actually have one of the um, most popular Chinatown in the Mountain West. And um, it just acknowledged the contributions of the Chinese Americans in this region. Chinatown used to be right in the heart of downtown Denver. Back in 1880, an anti-Chinese race riot brutalized the people, destroyed businesses, and also lynched a man named Look Young. Chinatown was never able to rebuild. It's a history not many in Denver knew about. Still, even in our communities, not everyone knows about the Chinatown, so it really goes to show, you know, how much further we have left to go, but also how much we've already achieved. The bright colors of the mural make the perfect backdrop for a celebration. The theme, celebrating Chinese American culture of the past, present, and future. That's what my hope is. You know, their timeline has gone on and on. The town isn't here anymore, but it lives on and it will continue in the future. I'm Danielle Kreuter, Denver 7. And there are so many more murals highlighting the diversity found across Denver. Yeah, a mural at the La Alma Recreation Center in Denver is just one of more than 40 historic pieces of art across Colorado that represent the Chicano community. Its bright colors connecting the past with the present show two young men, one dressed to work out, the other an ancient indigenous figure in the same pose holding two vessels with flames. These paintings highlight often untold or erased histories in cities where Chicanos and Mexican Americans played a key part in development. However, many have been lost to whitewashing, which is when a mural is painted over white. Yeah, in 2022, the National Trust for Historic Preservation placed the Chicano Community Murals of Colorado on its 2022 list of America's most endangered historic places. It was the first time the trust placed murals on its list. Outside the metro, a mural highlighting Colorado's Hispanic sugar beet workers was unveiled last year in Fort Collins. It's called Para Mi Familia, For My Family, which is written in large letters across the side of the Los Tarascos restaurant on College Avenue. Artist Armando Silva spent weeks painting a child working in a field and a woman in a straw hat, a butterfly in her outstretched hand. Silva says it's a thank you to the Hispanic sugar beet farmers who helped the Fort Collins economy flourish but never got the recognition they deserve. 
Now back here in Denver, several murals tell the story of Native Americans in Colorado, many created by Indigenous artists. A few of them can be seen in the parking lot of the Denver Central Market in the Rhino Art District. Three Indigenous artists created them as a part of the Rhino Mural Program. One of the artists, Danielle Seawalker, says she wanted to create something that represents their modern day story. Not all Natives wear headdresses or wear long braids with feathers that we can wear our comfy clothes and put our moccasins on. Danielle says her mural, still here, shows the state's indigenous people as they are, not as they were, wearing, quote, hoodies with mocks, our fur pelts with Nikes, and always showing up in the best earrings that ever was. You know, one could possibly take a day exploring all the many murals and still not see every one, and that can frankly be overwhelming. So coming up, we'll talk with two podcasters who did that hard work. We'll hear from them next. Welcome back to Real Talk with Denver 7 and CPR News. I'm Denver 7's Micah Smith. And I'm Colorado Public Radio's Nathan Heffel. Throughout this episode, we've explored different diverse murals in Denver and the communities and people they represent. And we got the idea in part from a podcast called Off the Walls. It's produced by CPR and Denverite, and it highlights a number of murals across the Denver area and the stories behind them. Joining us now are the creators of the podcast, Kibway Cooper and Emily Williams. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks, Thanks for having, for having us. us. So, uh, Kibwe, your podcast takes a number of different murals around the community. Tell us a little bit about your inspiration for doing a podcast like this. So, the idea from for a podcast kind of came from uh, a pre-existing idea of a for like a walking tour, and so it developed into this idea that we would document the diverse murals that represent the communities here in Colorado and the people that they're designed to empower. Yeah. So that's kind of where that idea came from. And there's so many of them across the city. You can't go anywhere without looking left or right mm -hmm. or over and Absolutely. finding one. But I love the fact that this podcast goes very deep into the stories behind them. And it's not just the artist, but it's the, the subject matter, the material, the history. That's very interesting. Absolutely. Uh, it's really great to work with people who have diverse interests. And Emily was, was uh, super instrumental in how we were able to select different murals from different communities and it just became a really fun collaborative environment. Yeah. Emily, let's get you in here. While there is a visual component to this podcast, which we'll touch upon in a minute, talk to me about how you were able to bring the visual beauty of a mural into podcast form. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge. <laughs> it was the thing that when we started to make this project, that was the big question is does this work to make a podcast about something that's really visual? But what we ended up doing is just recording very real moments of us going to these murals and trying our best as people who are not visual artists mm -hmm. to describe what we were seeing and I think also describe what we were feeling and sometimes also when we'd go look at these murals we had maybe spoken to the artist or spoken to someone really close to the mural and it totally changes the experience of then going and very closely looking at it. So yeah, it really came down to having those moments of just taking a moment, looking at the mural and trying to voice how it was making us feel and what we were seeing. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I think the fact that you do it so well. Uh, you do add an, a, a, an audio way to, to describe the beauty of these murals, which are all across the city. Now, the question for you, Emily, sticking with you a little bit, is how do you want people to, uh, what do you want people to take away from this podcast? Because I think individually you can listen to the episodes, but do they create kind of an arc in storytelling throughout all of the series? I think one of the really important things, like you mentioned, when you're in Denver, you, you look around, there's so many murals, you see so many, and we just focus on a handful, right? And we go really deep on a story behind a specific mural. And one thing I want people to know is, yes, you're surrounded by all these different works of art, but there are some really deep stories behind them. And I think sometimes people think, that murals are about the aesthetics or you know about having a great place to take a photo in front of but there are murals with really incredible stories and real people and you know a lot of thought and time behind them so i think we want people to look around them and look at those murals and think 
wow, there are probably a lot of stories that I don't that I don't know yet. You know, these aren't just visual. There's a lot more to them. Yeah. I love that you said it's not all about the aesthetic because of my mind when you said that automatically went to the River North Arts District, popularly <laughs> known as Rhino, right? Um, but it is an arts district, and so it is so colorful there. But yeah. there are murals all over Kibwe. Let's talk about how some of these murals highlight a particular neighborhood or culture. When you learn about the neighborhoods and cultures that these murals represent, what do you hope the viewer takes away? Well, hopefully, you know, um, you get a peek inside of the value system and the existence and the community that is there originally, right? Uh, we don't want to be so developed that we lose all sense of the origins of the communities that built up those environments that we are now benefiting from, right? Whether it's with new restaurants or new fun things to do. So when you look at some of these murals, they're reflective of the history of a people who had to work really hard to be seen at all. And thus they've created these public works of art as like living archives of who they are, where they come from, and the things that are really important to them. Now, Emily, your partnership with Apple Maps is really cool. Can you kind of explain what that is and, and how it works for your, your podcast? Yeah, so of course, since this is a, a visual thing that we're talking about and we want people to listen to the podcast and then go see these murals in person, we worked with Apple Maps to create a map that includes all of the murals that we feature in the show, shows you how to get to them. That map will also link you to our episodes and show you visuals. And as a bonus, there are other related murals that are included in, the, in that map too. So maybe another great mural by an artist that's featured in an episode that we didn't talk about that. So it's everything in the show, plus a few more things. Okay, boy, final question. What do you want uh, people to take away from your experience of these pieces? Because I know some of them you were eye-opening for you, just yeah. moving to the area and, be, and, and really finding out what the community was about. You know, for me personally, um, community is really important and finding a place where you feel safe and represented is important. For me, that was the Queen Fatima mural. I was really moved by it. Um, her service in the community and then having a mural painted of her, not based off of a celebrity status, but because of her heart of service and the legacy of Weldon Street Cafe in the, in the community, it inspired me to then move from Inglewood down into Five Points because I wanted to be a part of that history. So for me, I, I think if you're listening to the show, hopefully it inspires you to be a participant in equity, participant in community, and have a heart for service in some way, shape, or form because these murals are the epitome of community service, right? They're there to beautify the community and also hold the community together at letting them know that they're seen, they're valued, and they deserve to be represented. Kibway Cooper and Emily Williams, creators of the CPR Denverite podcast, Off the Walls. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. And you can find that where you get your podcasts. And to see that map, head to CPR.org slash Off the Walls. And that's this week's episode of Real Talk with Denver 7 and CPR News. Each week we'll have a real talk on issues that impact Coloradans who are often overlooked. You can find all of our shows on Denver7.com slash Real Talk or CPR.org slash Real Talk. Have a great day.